Will the City Council meeting of the City of Mount Austin please come to order? Today is Tuesday, September the 9th, uh, 2014. It is 6.30. Number two on the agenda is the invitation. I want to introduce you to someone tonight. His name is Pastor John Kim. He is with the Crossroads Community Church and they're on the Highway 5 South. That means they're just this side of County Line Road. Uh, it's www.facebook.com. The church has only been here for about a month and a half, and before that, they were in Anna. And they were in Anna since 2008. Sean lives in Anna with his wife, Larissa, and their four children. They range in age from a third grader to a senior. Uh, they moved to Texas from Arkansas in 1997. He attended graduate school in Fort Worth. They moved to Sherman before moving to Anna. The goal of their church is to teach the Bible, love God, love people, and rock the world. So if you will, please stand and Sean, will you please lead us in prayer? Let's pray. Father, thank, thank you so much for today. God, thank you for um, just your goodness and your mercies that are new every morning. God, thank you for the blessing of, of living in a country where we are free to to get together and to decide for ourselves um, just how we're going to live our lives. And God, we pray for wisdom and direction for the city council tonight. God, we pray that you would um, guide them um, in terms of just leading the city and uh, continued growth and development and, and all those kinds of things. Um, God, we pray that your hand would be upon them. And uh, God, we just pray for your favor for uh, the city of Van Alstyne. And uh, God, we pray for um, people of faith and community of faith in the city that uh, we would continue to have an impact on our city for Jesus Christ. And uh, God, we thank you for your love for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remain standing, please. And Robert Chastis will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands coming in, new businesses, new construction. A year ago, it was like we were a dead store. So, let's keep our city manager and keep our council manager form of government. Thank you. Thank you. The other are, are specific items. Thank you very much. item on the agenda is to conduct a public hearing to your comments for or against the City of Van Austin tax rate and announcement of date, time, and place of meeting to vote on the tax rate. Um, we'll turn that over to Frank Baker. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Council, uh, we've got our public hearing this evening, tonight is September 9th, 2014, it's after 6.30 p.m. Uh, we are at the posted location for the budget. Notice is the budget will raise more property taxes this year than last year's budget by $140,036.46 or 12%. And of that amount, $28,122.73 is tax revenue to be raised for new property added to the tax roll this year. Mayor, 
Are okay. there any comments regarding this? First call. Any comments regarding the tax rate? Second call. Third and final call. This this part this public hearing is closed. Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to um, announce that we are required to. Um, advise of the date, time, and place of the meeting to vote on the tax rate, um, and that will be uh, September 22nd at 6.30. It'll be here to meet, Senator Roger. Uh, that's fine. I'm double checking that. I don't think the book, the library's book sale will be taking place here. So we'll make September 22nd at 6.30 p.m. at the Community Center. Thank you, Thank you. Number seven, conduct a public hearing for your comments for and against a request. No, no. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I skipped one. Conduct a public hearing to hear comments for or against the City of Austin fiscal year 2014-15 operating budget. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to make a comment regarding the budget? I would like to address the audience and the council. Uh, I have written out what I would like to say because I don't want to overlook something or get something incorrect. I know it's not very popular to disagree, but I also know it's just as bad as not to speak up for what you believe, and I believe we're making a mistake with this budget. Often, when we look at things, we think personnel. But the city is a business, and we must approach it as a business, a business with a big responsibility to the residents of Van Alstine. This is not just the responsibility of myself and council, but also to our city employees. I have three things I would like to bring to you for consideration this evening. At our workshop, we were given an employee wish list, things that they wanted but not wanted bad enough to be in their budget. At the beginning, we were presented with a balanced budget that would not raise taxes. Things wished for ranged from employee benefits, police tasers, and storm shelters, and other things. Four items were selected by the council to be priority for any extra money obtained during the year. The council agreed to restore the employee benefits and thus raise the tax rate. All but one of the requests presented was from employees, and that one request was from Grayson College for an early warning system, aka weather siren. The college also stated that they would pay half the cost of this system, leaving the cost to the city $8,270. As Van Austin's mayor, I am involved with our city's emergency management. And it really bothers me that the council did not elect to provide this service to those on the west side of Highway 75. Yes, we all have family that are on the west side, family, friends, and students. Even though Mr. Baker brought this to the council's attention twice, that this offer might not be available next year, and it might cost us double, it was not considered, not even in the top four. Yes, there's a siren at the south end of town, each side of Highway 5. During a storm with the truck and traffic noise from Highway 75, I do not believe this siren can be heard by those on the west side. We have an obligation to the west side. If you still do not think so, consider the worst scenario. What if a destructive storm or tornado should hit us on the west side of town and damage could have been prevented by an early warning system? After this request, we are left open for a very large lawsuit. Even worse, what if there is a loss of life? Do you want 
to live with that on your conscience for the rest of your life, wondering if this early warning system might have made a difference. Secondly, we can how we can pay for this siren. I have been looking at the budget and I believe if we all give a little, it can be done without raising the tax rate. First, I've looked at the mayor's budget, 1,200. My budget last year was 3,000, which I tried not to use, and I don't want to use it again this year, and I would gladly give up that money to go toward the warning system. I will cut. The second is the council's expense, 2,400. I, I challenge the council to give up their expense. Let's look at the departments. Library office supplies, 700 other supplies. Miscellaneous, $850. And my three minutes are up, so I cannot finish telling you how we will get this money. Oh. Are there any other comments? Then I consider this, this closed. The next thing is to conduct a public uh, hearing to hear comments for or against a request by owner agent Linda Morgan to replant part of subdivision three, division uh, four as in part of block three, block 43, original town plant of Manostine being 0.87 acres of land in the James McKinney survey abstract number 77 located on the southeast corner of West Marshall Drive and Littrell Street. And we do have a comment for this. The first person that would like to speak regarding this is David Barr. Yes, I live uh, Creek Creek West Marshall, which would be next door to this um, lot. And we, we have no uh, objection to replat. We're just very concerned with the board that this, these lots remain single family. Um, had two previous events where we basically defeated the request to, uh, for this to be rezoned, and we're very concerned with the board that this might come up again. So, uh, I don't been in the neighborhood lately, but there's some homes going up, some very, really nice single family homes in the neighborhoods growing, and we just uh, want to see that continue. But anything other than single family goes in, that would uh, not be good for our neighborhood. So, I just want to express that. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next person who wishes to speak is Linda Morgan. The decision to replant is so that it would fit in with the neighborhood. And all the guidelines that you set up as far as your codes and your restrictions for the size of the lots, the variances, the everything is in your is what you have res your restrictions have set up for us. And so that's what I thought. And I can't see that replanting it into three lots is going to diminish the neighborhood at all. Anything it should help it. That concludes the ones that have signed up to speak regarding this. I do have one one question. Uh, our maps were very small. Will these lots be east and west or north and south? Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments regarding this? Can we ask questions now or wait until the direction of voting? Okay. I just wanted, I have been asked yeah. that question. I want to make sure the audience knows. Okay. Uh, are there any other comments or questions regarding this? that I consider this public hearing closed. We will go to item A, approval of minutes for the August 12th regular meeting, August 19th work session meeting, August 19th regular meeting, August the 25th and September the 2nd special call meetings. Are there any questions or corrections from council regarding these minutes? Councilman Blake. I, I, I do have a question. Well, I'll go to the other end okay. and come back. Thank you. Is it questions regarding the, the, the last two speakers? No, it's questions regarding the minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I have. I have. Okay. Yes. Councilman Moore. Billy, have you found it? 
Yeah, I think the only thing I had a question on was just something that's been covered since then because I just had a question on the Tuesday, September 2nd, 6.30 p.m. meeting, special call city council meeting. I thought that, that uh, part of that meeting we should have stated when the upcoming vote, I mean, the uh, vote on the tax thing would be, that would have been a part of that meeting. It was afterwards because there weren't any announcements on the agenda. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, in the public hearing? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was stated, but you're right, it's not in the minutes. Okay, okay. that's what I was that was my only comment. Oh, thank you. Next we go to item nine. Consider one. Oh, is there a motion that we approve the minutes? Sorry. There was one correction there from Jess who pointed out to change the word on from it was side to site. Side to site on the website recommendation. And that, is the, that is the correct suggestion. Is there a motion that we approve the minutes? Is there a second? A motion has been made and seconded. Are there any other questions? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passed unanimously. The next is number uh, nine, which is consider and take any action necessary regarding an ordinance adopting the City of Van Austin fiscal year 2014-15 budget. In your packet, you will notice the recommendations for this are that the staff recommends tabling the item for consideration at the special call for the special call meeting scheduled for Monday, September the 22nd, 2014 in an effort to comply with all applicable laws. That's correct, Mayor. Mayor Council, it's just a formality. Uh, but you take a lot of them, but it has to be brought to you. Uh, are there any questions from Council regarding this? If not, is there a motion that's tabled until the 22nd? A motion for Council Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Councilwoman. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion uh, asked to table this item. Next item is number 10, presentation of a recognition to Charles Milner for years of service. This item has been withdrawn due to an, uh, he has a illness in the family and is unable to be here tonight. We will go to uh, item 11. Item 11, consider and take any action necessary regarding a request by owner agent Linda Morgan to replant part of subdivision 3, division 4, and a part of lot 3, block 43, original town plan of Van Austin, Texas, being 0.87 acres of land in the Jackson McKinney Survey abstract number 77 located at the southeast corner of West Marshall and Liverpool Drive. And this uh, is for the replanting. Are there any questions from council regarding this? Councilman Have there been any time for any proposed housing on this lot? It is an issue. I mean, I have seen that one just dance a little small. But, but uh, a diagram of the buildings that would actually be built. And, and the, the issue whether or not they're going to look like single family homes or whether they're going to look like um, uh, multi family dwellings. It, it, it is a sensitive issue. I understand this this is strictly regarding the replant of the property. Yes. As far as as far as the, the building, the structures and the setbacks and all the proper requirements, that comes further that comes further down the line. Okay. Oh, you're, you're good. Yes. Yes, I did have a question, but for the sake of clarification, so it's currently single family residential and we're going to need single family yes. residential. Yes. Just for clarification. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Councilman Blake? Yeah, I had some questions. Where were they? Linda? Yeah. There you are. Uh, what are the width of the lots? Do you know what? Are they 80? I can't see it all. My drawing's real, real, real small, so I can't. I, have a, I, don't, have a, I don't have a magnifying glass that good. <laughs> they do have some orange flags down there, Billy. <laughs> so 
So Ms. Townsend? While he's looking at that, I, I do have a question. There's a very wide drainage ditch that cannot be abandoned. That takes up at least 10 feet on the lot. Will that still be a... Okay, 65. It's been the house grant, the foot grant has been taken into consideration as a foot grant on the 60 foot that it requires for the house. This dotted area right here is the, the drainage easement. Yeah. Okay, I can understand. Okay, you got 65 foot wide lots, 65 foot wide, I mean 60 foot wide, and 79. There, there's a 15 foot build back from the streets, and a 25 foot from the front, 25 foot from the rear. What is it between the two properties? What requirement for spaces? Or, huh? 15 feet? 10 feet on each one? So that'd be a total of 20. Okay, so 10. Ten for each house. 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 Ten Thank you. The background information on this, I'm going to read while we're going over the map, is the lot in question is on single family residential district one and it's 0.87 acres. The proposed plat will divide the single lot into three individual single family residential lots. share with the citizens provided by the city clerk um, typically citizens can know there's going to be an election because they're called uh, by the council so there's been an agenda item uh, for this particular election the procedures are slightly different um, a petition was submitted by a citizen to have an election to abandon the city manager form of government at City Hall on February the 21st, 2014. The petition did not result in an election being ordered for the May 10th, 2014 uniform election date because it did not have the required number of valid signatures. A second petition was submitted by a citizen at City Hall on July 28, 2014. This petition did not result in an election order for the November 4th, 2014 uniform election date because it did not have the required number of valid signatures. A third petition was submitted by a citizen at City Hall on August the 7th, 2014. This petition resulted in a proclamation issued by Mayor Salmon ordering a special election for the City of Van Alstine for the November 4, 2014 uniform, uniform election date because it did have the required number of valid signatures. Therefore, there will be a special election on November the 4th, 2014 for the purpose of determining whether to abandon the city manager form of government. Citizens can vote by early appearance 
from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on October 20th through the 24th, on October 26th and October 27th through the 31st at the Grayson County Election Administration in Sherman, at the Grayson County Subcourt House in Denison, at the Pottsboro ISD Administration Building in Pottsboro, at Whitesboro City Hall, and at the Grayson College campus here in Van Alstine. Early voting will also happen on October the 26th between the hours of noon and 5 o'clock p.m. If anybody would like an application for ballot by mail, that application must be received by October 24th and would be submitted to the Grayson County Elections Administrator in Sherman, Texas. On election day, which will be November 4th, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., citizens can vote in Van Alstine at the Grayson College campus and at numerous other places throughout the county, including one in Bells, one in Collinsville, four locations in Denison, one location in each of Gordonville, Gunter, Howe, Pottsboro, and Sandler, seven locations in Sherman, one in Tioga, one in Tom Bean, one in Whitesboro, and one in Whiteright. The reason for um, all of these additional voting locations outside of the city limits is the city has entered into a contract with uh, the Grayson County Elections Administrator to assist in providing election services. Therefore, that makes citizens el eligible to vote uh, basically throughout the county where there are polling locations for those who may work outside of Van Alstine during the daytime or something, there may be a, a closer location. But that is the information related to the upcoming election. Thank you. I only have two who wish to speak regarding this. First, we have Paul Nobles. I'm Paul Nobles. I have Curious Coffee Co. Just opened in downtown. Been open for three months. Um, we're doing very well. We've got a lot of support from a lot of the community. The PTAs meet there. The uh, uh, Fall Roll meetings meet there. This has been a really great place for people to grow the town. And I feel like it's, uh, I'm sort of new here already, but I feel like, um, you know, nothing's broken at this point. Um, there's also you know, there's a ton. I'm actually looking at doing another business, a uh, unique business in the square that's complimentary to the town. I'm um, looking at a place. Uh, um, I know we've only got a few minutes, but you know, we've won the uh, Texas Comptroller Leadership uh, Circle Award for Transparent Local Government just recently. That's that's a big deal, actually. And um, we got competitive in a utility rates. Uh, um, our the competitive impact fees that the, the developer has to uh, charge to. to that we charge a developer are competitive throughout the county. Um, we've just got a tremendous amount of uh, things, a lot of groundswell going this direction, and uh, I've had nothing but absolute success in my coffee shop. I don't see any reason to change anything. Everything's going great. Thank you very much. Sir. And the other is Billy Flight. I didn't show up to speak for or against either side of the issue. I just wanted to make sure people understood some of the facts related to the issue. Most people know how the city manager form of government works now with the city manager, council, form of government. We have a council that's submitted that's elected from the entire community of five members. We have a mayor that's selected from the entire community. The council and the mayor together with the mayor's recommendation and possible vote they hire a city manager, and the city manager runs the day-to-day -day services of the city based on what the council in turn tells them to do. The mayor earns no salary. No, the council people wouldn't earn any salary. The city manager, of course, earns a salary because he's considered to be a professional, and he's supposed to be considered to be somebody that's not political, that's not politically rated, rated related, or does anything based on politics. Okay? The opposite. Well, not totally the opposite, but the other plan that we're considering going to is a strong mayor form of government. The difference can be that, first of all, I'm going to take council 
Their main function in life then is to pass ordinances and regulations. The mayor has the rights to veto those, those regulations and stuff that they come up with. The, they, they can override her veto, or her or him veto. I'm trying to keep this, I'm, I'm not speaking against or for you, I'm just trying to, I'm using this as an example since you're here. Uh, they don't, they don't, you know, they, they can override her veto with a three quarters vote, so basically four out of five people would have to vote to override the veto. Then the next function, our mayor functions, she, she or he can be paid a salary determined by the council. I think presently we have it on the books because at one time we had a strong mayor form government. There still is on the books a salary. I haven't been able to find out what it is yet because it's in old documents that they have to manually go down to it, <laughs> you know, like crazy to find, which they are going to eventually find it. Uh, that, you know, so the mayor gets paid a salary. And, and, and if she wants it or he wants it, you know, they don't have to take the salary, it's up to them, but they are going to be serving a lot of time because they now are the chief officer of the, of the city. They can hire a, what they call a city administrator, which is like a city, uh, a city manager that can do things for them if they want to. And in fact, they can hire and fire anybody within the city that now is on their, that they're the ones that are in charge of doing that. And the council can't do anything about it. So, so that's their a part of their function. They also uh, are in charge of the budget. They present the budget to the council. The council does have to approve the budget. They have that vote on that item. I'm sure there's some other things that you know equally well. That, that I, I, okay, on the present form of government. Okay, I'm good. And that does not cost me at all.
Councilman Plank, do you have any questions? No. Councilman Norton. No questions. Councilman Desmond. Councilman Desmond. Councilman Desmond. Councilman Desmond. Okay, since there are no questions, is there a motion to approve this? Mayor? Yes? Uh, may I just uh, point out to be sure um, all the council saw this in the ordinance? Um, the ordinance would have an effective date of this Friday. That's the date, if you were to approve it, that the caption would be published in the newspaper. And so that is what is in the ordinance as, a, as an effective date. And it's my understanding that meters would be read the following week. And so these rates would be in effect on the next meter read. And so I wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, so it would be in effect on water that was used before this was approved? No, for, well, what the meter, yeah. you said the What's the meter desire read? of the council was last year and is, if it needs to be reworded in a different way, what you all, would like to have done last year was make it effective on the day that we read meters, um, which is going to have to, it's going to be the 12th because of the um, publication, which we're required to do. Well, they'll begin reading meters on the 15th. So the readings that are collected September 15th um, will bill October 1 at the old rate. Okay. And then the October 15 readings collected will bill November 1st, so 9.15 to 10.15, build out November 1st, will be these rates that you see before you. Okay. Then when they read it the 15th, it will be at the old rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Based, based on that, I think we should change se section 7. To just add a clause that said the rates, just add a, a, a sentence that says the rates will apply to the bills to be sent starting November 1, 2014. Okay, what page is that? That is on the very last page of The, uh, the effective date, if it's the 15th, they've already read meters on the 12th, that rate would go into effect until the 15th, which would be the next billing cycle, which they actually read October 15th, correct? Well, that, that's why we're, spe we're specifically adding a sentence that the rates themselves will not be used until the bills that are to be sent on November 1st and after November 1st. Okay. Then the so new rate, so it, we will change that to read. Well, we're just going to add an additional sentence. Because um, you want the ordinance to be in effect when the meter is read for the bills that will then be mailed on November 1st. I'm saying okay. that right? Yeah. And that sentence will read? The, the rates will apply to the utility bills sent to customers on and after November 1st, 2014. Thank you. Are there any questions? And there is, is there a motion at this time to accept it with the addition of the uh, effective date in this? We have a motion from Councilman Moore. Is there a second? Second from Councilman Cooper. Any further questions? All of those in favor, please raise your hand. Up, up, up. It is unanimous. Just a slow pan. <laughs> the next item is 16. Consider and take any action necessary regarding passage of an ordinance establishing park usage fees. Uh, 
this was uh, as directed by council at the August 12th regular meeting. Judy Fort drafted the proposed ordinance for our consideration as a result of discussion with our parks board members, uh, April Butler and Gary Evans, regarding the fee for ball field use. Uh, does council have any questions? Uh, Councilman Plank? No, no. Councilman Moore? Thank you. Mayor? Yes. Um, same comment as before. On Section 5, the effective date, I left that blank because I did not know when you wanted to start charging the fees. Okay. In Section 5, the effective date. Make a recommendation that we do it on the first of the budget here. October first. Yes. Here. The you only session I would have is during the middle of fall baseball right now, and I would like for everybody to get the fall baseball instead of trying to get a season. Making. Would it be better January the first? I think that would be. Would be right there. Okay. I don't have a problem. What you think? Do you have? Would you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that. Does council have any questions regarding this thing? Do you have any questions? Then is there a motion that we uh, pass this ordinance with the effective date of January the 1st, 2015? Councilman Chanska, is there a second? Second by Councilwoman Kelly. All those in any further questions? All of those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. We have item 17. Consider and take any action necessary regarding passage of a resolution authorizing participation in the 2014 tax resale option. Is that yours, Mr. Baker? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Council, uh, Bruce Stidham has recommended the council take this action to sell the property and get it in the hands of uh, private uh, citizen, private owners, so that way we can uh, get it back from tax rolls and they can contribute to property tax And the property that we are referring to? Mayor, it's uh, on Natalie. Nunnally Avenue, property ID is 168116. And it is found at the corner of Nunnally and terminates right there at the back end of Meadowbrook. Uh, uh, so it's at the, at the first end, end of the first block on Nunnally. Is this property vacant? Is there a, a house on it? I believe there's a home on it. There is no So it's the corner of the back of the Meadowbrook and Dunley. Meadowbrook, it backs up the Meadowbrook. It's Meadowbrook's not a street. Well, actually, yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions regarding this council? If there are no questions, uh, is there a motion at this time? A motion that we uh, pass a resolution authorizing participation in the 2014 tax resale auction. Is there a second? Second. Any further questions? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passed. The next item on the agenda is a, proclam a presentation of a proclamation. This proclamation was sent by the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution, Martha Jefferson Randolph Chapter. They wanted to invite you to attend 
at Constitution Week celebration, ringing the bell, celebrating the 227th year since the signing of the U.S. Constitution. The event will be Wednesday, September the 17th. The program starts at 11:45, bell ringing at noon, and it will be at the southwest corner, southeast corner. I'm sorry, of the Grayson County Courthouse. The proclamation uh, they have uh, requested this from the towns in Grayson County, and uh, it will also uh, be attended by the Sister Grove chapter of the DAR here in Van Austin. Are there any questions regarding uh, this proclamation? Is there a motion? Yes, I move that we accept the proclamation. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Are there any further questions? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Very high. <laughs> in case you're wondering, his wife is very informed, it is involved and was instrumental in our Sister Grove VAR organization here. And we really appreciate it. And we want to give a good story to So the next thing that we have is our department reports. Jennifer, do you have anything you would like to no, report? Chief Barnes? September the 27th here at the police department, we're going to be uh, from 10 uh, a.m. to 2 p.m. We're going to be doing uh, uh, accepting prescription medications uh, for uh, the DEA, which will dispose of it. So we'll be putting that in the paper. I know it's kind of way off, but from 10 to 2, you'll see some flyers at the city drug library and some other places. So uh, good program because those uh, are not going to be disposed of uh, down the drain. That will be the 27th of this month? Saturday, yes ma'am. From uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10 to 2. Yeah. And I want to add to that to encourage anyone. You know often you get a prescription from the doctor and if you're like me, you don't take it. Last year I had to go to Sherman to get rid of those prescriptions because you do not want to leave it in the cabinet for children to find or for a misuse. You don't ever put it down the drain. So this is a wonderful program that our police department is providing for the residents. Take advantage of it if it's in your nature. Next and, we have Chief Smith. Well, and also to add to that is that we will be, uh, for those that can't get out, if they'll call the police department, we'll actually go to their for the elderly uh, and pick those up. Very good. And another thing, uh, you know, don't forget September 11th. So. Yes. Uh, it's coming on. So. Yes. I'm going to thank you. Stand yet. Yep. Uh, the first step of our community health initiative is to be our senior passport program. We can work with uh, seniors and different age people. We feel that they can benefit from putting together a book that's like blood pressure logs, uh, blood sugar logs, education logs, case emergency information. And also, we partnered with seven of the groups in the county who actually provided us with the funding for this uh, to put these books to to together and everything. So, we're looking at having those completed in the middle of October. And I've started keeping out after that. So, that's good. Cool. Mr. Pine? We're uh, closing up uh, the street project. On all three of the streets, and they'll be completed. Uh, they should put the top coat in the last three this week, and then uh, final coat in the last three this week. I heard they met the school crowd this morning when yes. everybody was taking their children to school, and you were working on the street, <laughs> on the highway. Very busy, but we do appreciate it. Next, we have a, an interim librarian. Her name is Judy Kinsey. You probably know her. Do you have anything you would like to report to us regarding the library? Yes, thank you. Uh, we wrapped up our summer reading programs for the summer in August. We have a regularly uh, scheduled program uh, with our Wednesday morning story time and Tuesday afternoon story time. Uh, she wants to let you mention in September 11th, because we were never in the library as well. We've got a three minute display to commemorate the day. We also uh, set up a table with um, 
paper that we're asking for people to stop and take a moment and uh, remember where they were and have them together and everything that wants to display also uh, books and other materials uh, about Mark um, We also, of course, the big event uh, coming up next week for the upcoming Clinton Library to get books out. Uh, Freedom Night is here at the community center and I start the first of the evening at 7 p.m. You can be a member of the Friends. Memberships are available at the door. Get the first uh, the first traffic books as well as uh, they really put on a nice spread. So it's well worth it. Drop the mark that it was probably Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday at 9 to 4. So you know, friends are a great group down in the harbor. This is their biggest event of the year. And that's the Thank you. It's a wonderful book sale. And if you come Saturday, you can bring a big grocery sack and you can fill it up for a dollar. All the books you can get in that one sack. I assume you still do that. It, it, they've done it every year. And it's a great buy, great funds, and we have a great library. Next, we have the city manager's report. All right, council, uh, let you know if you hadn't already noticed, the Sonic's getting ready to open. Uh, they pulled a preliminary pump permit. Uh, they're, they've been out there today getting the AC fixed for the employees inside the structure, as well as uh, revamping a lot of the aesthetics to the structure before they have their inspections. Uh, they'll be contacting uh, Ty Chapman for Veritas for the building inspections, as well as Chief Smith for the final. Uh, and something that's been long awaited and, and you've asked me for updates on, and I've told you uh, about Golden Chick several times. It hasn't uh, has made. They actually came in today and applied for a temporary permit for, they already had the permit for building the structure. They came in and applied for a permit to put a uh, construction, uh, temporary structure on the site so that way they get moved. So that's, uh, that's exciting. Um, they didn't exactly give us a date when they start moving in third, but um, they're just moving with Golden Chick. So we're excited uh, that happened just late this afternoon. So, Two good things on the retail front. Very good. Okay, we we'll don't have uh, council comments. <coughs> Councilman Clay, do you have any comments? Comment. Councilman Moore, do you have any comments? Councilman Vasta? Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, senior Center is having their monthly uh, music night. It's coming Saturday night at 6 o'clock, pizza at 7 o'clock. Music. Uh, and enjoy this good time. Uh, we're also having a chamber breakfast tomorrow morning from 8 to 9 at the C office. So if you're ready to come see the chamber. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Public Works for all the coordinating all the work on the streets. Great job. And also, I want to endorse the uh, with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Open Meetings Act, the City Council is going to meet and close the executive session pursuant to applicable laws. The item for the executive session is convened into ex executive session pursuant to Section 551.074, Personnel matter Matters, for our annual evaluation of the City Manager. It is now 725. 
Yes. We are adjourned till 7.30. Thank you again.